Okay, now that we have our initial setup here with the materials and our key light, it's time for us to approach more this specific mood that a reference here is showing. So we have a very strong separation between the lit part of it and the part that's in the shade. So let's try to replicate here. Right now we have everything's pretty much on the lit side. So let's try to bring this back to the shade. So we come here and there's different ways we can do that, but let's do it with lighting. Now I created a light. It's again, very far because it's at the origin, but that's just how we see me set up. Let me bring it to here. There we go. Okay, so we have another light here. Now this light, this light could be negative as well. So that we reduce, ah, okay. I've noticed we still have a temporal anti-aliasing. Whenever you're doing edits, it's better to work with standard so that you can see results right away. So now that we have our negative light in place, let's put it this way. So I think for this kind of lighting, it's better to have two viewports. So one of them is going to have our work cam and the other one is going to have our perspective. So panels, turn off panel. There we go. So this is our um, MNPRX render. Let me bring it kind of to the aspect ratio. And in here we have a perspective. There we go. And let us also use MNPRX for this. We need to enable lighting and shadow as well here. So there we go. So we can work much better because we're actually seeing what we're doing in our shot. So this, we're going to need to increase the angle. It's going to be 60. Let me bring this up. If it's right, just look at this now. Let's put it up. So we're trying to achieve this gradient that we saw before. So for this, we're going to need also some penumbra. Yes. And then seeing that this might be there up. Here is lit as well, so it's more like a yeah, like a negative spotlight on that side. It's rather on Tomo's side than on Toti's side in this case. Let me the bunch of things are distracting me a bit. Lights and I want to see polygons. I think it's better. So we have a better result of this. So now you notice that it also has kind of this misty transition towards the background, and that is perfect for the atmosphere. So we first need to find out, I'm going to display something here, and what I'm going to display is the object details. And what we're interested in is the distance from camera. So 1300. Once I know that, there we go. So this goes to 100. As you can see, you start seeing something more towards what we're seeing here. You notice that in general, the edge darkening is very strong. So let me change that edge darkening intensity to 0.7. Just overall reduce it a bit. There we go. So we have more of this nicer transition. Let's bring back our hero characters. There we go. So it's starting 
from the rise and going up. Um, you can put this to 150, then the transition will be even stronger. Something that I've noticed also is that the shadows should be even more purple from what I'm seeing. I mean, our diffuse is 0 0.5, that would make it a bit further. So if I bring this to 1, for example, the shadow will be entirely purple, but it doesn't fit with the overall look of the scene. Even 0 0.5 is a bit strong. Um, 0 .4. You can also change the color of the shade in the key light. Shadow color, I'm going to change it to a purple again. So if I were to make it white, you can see it's getting towards, it's getting quite bright in general. Now the color is gone. Bring that back. There we go. What I've noticed here is that Dot is quite dark in general. Let me put an ambient light and see how we can change that from here. So, ambient light. That is way too bright. So one. The ambient light is going to be, let's put 0 0.3. And then let's change the key light and put it to 0 0.7 so that at the end of the day we still have one and the colors are not too blown out. Yeah, we start losing a bit of contrast though, but at least that is much nicer. Let's increase the value of the negative light. 0 0.7. There we go, so it's much more purple, which is great. So that's what we're after. I've noticed also that the transition is much smoother. So let's actually see from the spotlight and customize it there. Again, since the scene is too big, we need to adjust the clipping planes. 100 to 10,000 should be fine. And with our reference here, let's increase the penumbra of the camera, of the spotlight. So, and then I can reduce the combla angle to 20 as well. go and let me change to perspective. We could also simply increase the value of our negative light. Let's put a minus 0 0.8 to have something more purple like here or go even further. Let's go 0 0.9 like that. Maybe it should go a bit further up. So let me change that. It's a matter of tweaking until you have the desired result. Okay, something that's been bothering me a bit is that all the the grass is looking exactly the same. So I would like to change this. Let's go here and for that since some parts of the grass are in the shade we're gonna change the shade color a bit so we can make them muddy in that sense could make it like this or oh this is kind of nice so yeah, we have a bit of variation. Let me check this one. This one we can just adding a bit of some interesting touches just to have it a bit more unique. Yeah, but purple doesn't kind of really fit. 
let's make it more towards yellow and that is way too yellow push this to here there we go so now it has a hint of blue just adding a bit of interest all right i think we can call this for this video and in the next video we're gonna customize how the noise effects are being made